So what's up, my favorite PewTubers? Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Agency Arms Single Port 417 Compensator. So welcome back, my beautiful PewTubers. Hope you guys are doing really well today. So, you know, over the past year, I've really been exploring compensators. You know, I understand there's always haters out there. It's like, why do you need a comp on a nine millimeter? Kind of the same reason, why do you need an opinion? <laughs> With that being said, you know, so far we've tested five different compensators. We've tested did Arc Division, both the full size and the stubby one. We've also tested the Texas Black Rifle full size and stubby one. I actually just did a comparison video not too long ago. So if you want to take a look at that video i'll put a link down below for it and we've also tested the mayhem syndicate carry comp this thing is held in place with a roll pin and it's super tiny this is my all-time favorite but it's the hardest one to get your hands on just because it just sells out you know when they restock they're sold out again one thing i have learned is they're not all created equal they all have wildly different temperaments to them and there are a couple of things that i find that are super important when testing a compensator that i really look for number one i want it to be able to cycle with range ammunition. And the reason I say that is I know with my carry uh, ammo, I use a plus P 124 grain for my carry ammo, the Hornady, I think it's the critical duty. I know if it will cycle with range ammunition, it will most definitely cycle with some more powerful hot ammunition. And that's where compensators really shine is with self-defense plus P type ammo because they actually compensate even better. You know, I always wanna make sure that it is most definitely gonna cycle with range ammo first. The second thing I look for is I want it to be able able to cycle with the OEM guide rod spring. The OEM springs, I believe in Glock 19s and 17s, I think they're around 18 pounds. However, you know, in the past we have found with arc division comps, I always got to fiddle with springs. Okay, that one cycled. Let's try one more. And that one didn't. Whereas Texas Black Rifle, I, I don't have to fiddle with springs. The uh, Mayhem Syndicate Carry Comp, I don't have to fiddle with springs. Now, what's great about that is I know if it will cycle with the OEM spring, if I want it to shoot a little bit flatter, I can throw a reduced power spring in it and it will be just a little bit more fun at the range. And the reason I say all that is because I look at everything from a concealed carry standpoint. I don't look at it as, oh, this is just a fun gun. I'm going to go to the range. Yeah, I do have, I do have guns for that, but I like for part products to be dual purpose. Like I can go have fun with it, but if I wanted to throw it on a carry gun, it will be reliable as well. And that's why I wanted to check out the Agency Arms Compensator. They actually have two versions. They have a dual port design and they got the single port design. This is kind of like their version of the stubby comp. There are a lot of pros about this, but there is one con to it that does really bother me. But there are a lot of unique features about this that none of the other compensators have. I actually bought this um, to bring it in for a review because I mean, nobody was, had these in stock, but I do have a guy that has them in stock. And so I'll put a link down below to my blog post where you can find these guys in stock and stuff. And I'll also try to find coupon codes for you as well. So with that being said, let's just dive up close. Let's take a look at it. And then later on in the video, we'll roll some range footage so you guys can get an idea on how it actually compensates. So here we are up close. This is my Polymer 80 build that I did. Uh, this is using the Danger Close Armament Frame that is get this beautiful Cerakote. And then this is my Southwest Precision slide. I've actually already done a video on that. But if you haven't seen that, there'll be a link in the description for you. Uh, or you can just go search my channel. But yeah, this has been a pretty cool little build. But I threw the Agency Arms 417 compensator on there and it's been running really well. Um, we'll talk more about that here in a bit. But right now, I just want to give you guys kind of an up close and personal look because this compensator is very different than a lot of the compensators that we've tried in the past. With that being, there's a little port here for the guide rod. Usually the guide rod just floats at the bottom. However, I'm not a big fan of this and I will tell you why here in a little bit. But down here, I do like that they used set screws that go in at a 45 degree angle. That is something that I really preferred on the Arc Division comps. But we'll talk more about those comps versus this comp here in a bit. They also have a dual port and this is the single port. Um, I really wanted to try this one just because it's a lot nicer for concealed carry and things like that. One thing that they've done very different that I've never seen on any other compensator is you can install your front sight on here. And theoretically, what that does is when you're shooting and your slide cycles, your front sight, 
your front sight kind of stays in place and you're able to track your shots a lot easier, at least theoretically. Um, I will be doing a part two to this video because I haven't tested it like that yet, but I will take this off, put it on there, and then we'll do a part two to this video. Basically, it installs just like any other compensator installs. This is the way I do it. I put a little blue Loctite on the threads of the barrel, screw it on till it's flush, turn it upside down, put a little blue Loctite onto these threads, and then let it sit for about 24 hours, then go shoot it. I've never had an issue like that. The benefit of using blue Loctite over red Loctite, you can actually remove this without using a heat gun or torch or anything like that. It's completely reversible. Um, and that's what I like about blue Loctite. Someone asked me a while back, they said, hey, wouldn't the heat from the barrel, you know, kind of loosen that Loctite? I've never had that happen, guys. And I've actually put a boatload of rounds through various compensators and I've never had one come loose. So that's how you kind of install them. Um, you can see right up here in the front, it says 417 right there, has their logo right across the front. And it also follows the pattern of a lot of their thread protectors where it looks like a bolt. Another thing they did, you'll notice that it's chamfered. And it's funny because this slide happens to be chamfered. So I'm guessing they are assuming that we aren't gonna put these on a stock Glock because the stock Glock doesn't have that flat chamfer on it. But it's kind of cool because it does, it actually very nicely matches the chamfer that's on the slide. Guys, like I said, I will put a link below to where you can find all these parts and coupon codes. If that's something you wanna check out and you see something here that you like, I always do that in every single video. That's what it looks like. It looks phenomenal, it matches up. But there are some things about this that I do not like. So let's jump up top. I'm gonna to tell you the pros and the cons of this. And then I'm gonna tell you, you know, if I think Agency Arms did a good job or did they drop the ball on this one? Back up top. So there it is in all its fine glory, the Agency Arms 417. So let's talk about what my experiences have been like. Right off the bat, I can tell you this, it 100% cycles and locks open with range ammunition and with an OEM guide rod spring. That is a win. I did test it with a 13 pound spring. It didn't seem to shoot any flatter. A lot of times with Texas Black Rifle and Arc Division, they seem to shoot a little bit flatter with the lighter spring. In the hand, it doesn't feel any different whether or not you got the light spring in it or the OEM spring. So that's that was really interesting to note. The funny thing about where I bought this was I ordered it and then I filled out the information and had it shipped. You know how sometimes you have like the autofill stuff going on on your computer? I guess it like autofilled Tactical Toolbox. The owner of the company actually put it in note in the box like hey big fan of the channel let me know if you ever need anything so thank you that was really nice of him i did buy this with my own money guys i didn't ask anybody to send it to me i just really wanted to do this review because i know that a lot of you guys have been requesting it interesting note about springs i'm not a big fan of using lightened guide rod springs on a carry gun and the reason that is is sometimes it won't go back into battery like right there see and then I have to like kind of kick it forward. This is a 13 pound spring. The 15 pound spring works a lot better, but I digress. So with that being said, you know, if this is something I'm gonna carry with, I definitely want to use OEM springs, which is why that is super important. Now, I still do need to test this, you know, with putting a sight on the front of it. You know, unlike any other compensator out there, put your front sight on there. And supposedly your front sight doesn't feel like it moves as much, you know, because it's not reciprocating back. It's actually just staying out there in front of you. And as the slide comes back, you know, your front sight is still right here. So theoretically, it's easier to track your sights. We will be doing an update video with a front sight on the compensator itself. That way I can give you guys my opinion about it. But right now I was just using the red dot on there and I didn't have any issues with um, aiming or anything. Now, now, one thing to note about compensators, and I will say this about every single compensator that I've tested, I think it's very important to use a red dot with a compensator. Reason being is compensators actually introduce another factor, a little bit of a bullet drop on the target. I've always found with any compensator that I shoot, I'm always hitting about one to two inches.
inches lower than I do without it. So with a red dot, you can adjust the elevation, whereas with just factory iron sights, you can't adjust elevation. So if you're gonna carry with one of these and you're not gonna use a red dot, just keep in mind what your point of aim, point of impact's gonna be, and you should be able to train around that. Now let's talk about the biggest con of this compensator and what really pisses me off about it. So they've made this where they're proprietary to either Gen 3 or Gen 4. Every other compensator that we have tested, you have been able to use it on any other Glock generation that you want. Nope, not Agency Arms, they made it proprietary. So if you have a Gen 3 and a Gen 4, you're not gonna be able to swap this back and forth. You're gonna have to buy two compensators. And that really makes me kind of angry because I really like things to be versatile as possible. Now there is a way to make these more versatile um, where you can swap them, but it's kind of a workaround and I just don't, I think it's totally unnecessary to be really honest honest with you. And that change comes, like I showed you up close, right here in this little front part right here. Gun is cycling, your guide rod actually kind of goes inside of it. Now that's great and all, but what is the functional purpose of it? The only purpose I could see for this is they just wanted to make it look different. I could be totally wrong about this, but I really feel like Agency Arms is forcing people to like create these workarounds to swap it from Gen 3 to Gen 4 and back and forth for an aesthetic reason that doesn't seem to have any real function to it. That's my biggest gripe about this. They always talk about they put function over form. They don't neglect form, but they're always about purpose driven and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, this was totally against your uh, mission statement of function over form because now I have to create a workaround to use this on a Gen 4. If you really want to get one of the Agency Arms 417 compensators and switch it between Gen 3 and Gen 4, this is what you need to do. You need to buy the Gen 3 version. Then you need to get a Gen 3 guide rod. Then you get a Gen 4 to Gen 3 reducing ring for your gun. And what that does, uh, the reducing ring goes into the front of your slide right here. It will capture this and then you could put it onto a Gen 4. The reason you don't want to get the Gen 4 is because the bottom of this is going to be so flared out that it won't actually... See how it kind of comes back into the dust cover right here? It won't work with a Gen 4 one. So. If you wanna be able to have versatility, get the Gen 3 one. If you don't care, just get whichever one you want, but that's how you make it work back and forth. You gotta get the Gen 3 guide rod and the reducing ring. I'm nitpicking at this point, but modularity and being able to do what you want with the product is really important to me. So that is one area I feel like they dropped the ball. But with everything else, guys, I can just tell you if I had zero malfunctions with this, I put 150 rounds through it and it has ran like a champ with the OEM guide rod with range ammunition and no issues with it locking open on the last round. And for that, I gotta tell you, you know, it does exactly what Agency Arms states it will do. It reduces muzzle rise, pushes the sights down faster so you can get back on target, get another follow-up shot, and it works with OEM internals, and it works with range ammo. So in my opinion, this is a win if this is something you want. If you want to get a compensator, this is a really good option to go. Once I get a couple more compensators in, we will do an ultimate head-to-head -head of all of them. And I have no problems at all carrying with this compensator because it functions that reliably. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this down in the comments section below. I'd love to speak with you guys about it. But hey, if you're feeling up to it, just go ahead and smash the like button. Subscribe if you aren't already. And until next time, you guys stay sexy.